Okay, this video is to practice. It's our first uh, practice using um, doing the derivatives for impl implicit functions. So I'm just going to do the first three on this video because they take a little bit. And then I'm going to write it here. But you need to do all your work in your spiral notebook because there really isn't enough room here. And I just wanted to, I did this in class. And I just wanted to make a video so if someone was uncertain how, to, how I did something, they can look it back up. So this first one here, I've got a term here, a term here, and term here. And because these are implicit, my variables are mixed, my x and y's are mixed. So I look at this term here. This one has a product, so there's my f and g. This is a term, and this is a term. So that's not going to be an issue to do the derivative. But um, I'm going to set up my product rule here. So I'm going to put my f and g's right here. So I know f is x squared, f prime is 2x and the derivative is with respect to x, so I want you to put the dx there. I do know it'll cancel later, but please do what I ask you to do because later on when we do related rates, it'll make life easier. My g for my product rule is y. My g prime is actually 1 dy, or you can just say dy, but I'll just put the 1 there for the, this is the first time that we're doing this. Okay, so I'm all set up to do my product rule at first. So I'm going to do my first term right here, my product rule. So I'm going to do f prime g. So I have 2xy, and I'm going to put the dx at the end. And that's what I want you to make sure is put everything in the front of your dx or dy, and it'll make this much easier later on. Then I've got plus fg prime. So that's going to be plus x squared. And there is a 1 there, but I'm not going to put it there of dy. So I'm done with my first term. Now I'm going to do the derivative of negative 3y, so it's going to be negative 3 dy, because it's respect to y. The derivative of a 7, I keep making these messes here, the derivative of 7 is 0, and the derivative of 0 is 0. So this is going to equal 0. Okay. Now what I want you to do is go through and divide everybody because your derivative is you're actually solving for dy dx. So you're going to have to, we're doing it with respect to x. So I'm going to do this for each one of these. And by doing that, you're going to see right here, I can say, thanks for playing. That one's gone. These two, um, both are dy dx. Okay. So then what I'm going to do next is actually isolate these two so I can factor that out. So I'm going to move this 2xy over here. So I have x squared dy dx minus 3 dy dx equals 0. Excuse me. It's going to equal negative 2xy, sorry. Negative 2xy. I moved it over here. Now, you need to solve for dy dx. Both terms have it in it, so I'm going to factor out the dy dx. And when I do that, I have x squared minus 3 is negative 2xy. And because these are hooked by uh, multiplication, like I always say, you can divide by this glop. So I know that dy dx, or the derivative of y with respect to x, is negative 2xy over x squared minus 3. OK, now I do know there's different ways to do this that you'll see some people not doing dx and dy. You'll see them use just y prime. But like I said, I've done this a long time. Please, please, please do it this way so that later on you'll see there's a method to my madness. So that's number one. All right, now I'm going to do number two. Number two is similar. And um, we did these in the meet today. And I just wanted to make sure those of you that needed to see this again. So again, I have a term here. I can do the derivative of the term here. But I, here I have, again, a product rule. So I'm going to put the 5 with my f and then call this my g. So I'm going to set up my f and g's here. So I have f is 5x squared. f prime is going to be 10x dx. g is y cubed. g prime is 3y squared dy. So I'm not going to need that till I get over to the other side. So let's start doing the derivative. So on the left, x cubed is 3x squared dx plus 3y squared dy equals f prime g. So I have 10xy cubed dx plus fg prime. So I have 15x squared y squared dy. 
okay? And I always look at this and make sure I have all these terms before I divide through by dx, so I'm going to do that. And you'll notice that these two, I can say, thanks for playing, they're gone. And I'm just going to rewrite this one time to make it nice. So I've got 3x squared plus 3y squared dy dx equals 10xy cubed plus 15x squared y squared dy dx. So all I'm going to do now is get my um, dy dx's on one side and my uh, other terms on the other. And it doesn't matter which way you go. I could move this over with this one or this over here, and then I would do the opposite. So I just want you to know that you could be doing go to the left and some, your friend go to the right, and you would come up with the same derivative with all the signs opposite. You both would be correct. So I'm just, for the sake of this, I'm, I'm going to move this over here. So by doing that, this, is, this 3x squared is going to go over there. So I have 3y squared, and I'm actually going to factor out the dy dx right off the bat. So I, I kind of skipped a step, so if that bothers you a little bit, I'm just factoring it out and then putting it there. So here's the 3y squared minus 15x squared y squared. So I took care of the dy's, put them on the same side and factored it out, equals 10xy cubed minus 3x squared. Okay, now these again are hooked by multiplication, so I can divide by the glop. So I have dy dx equals 10xy cubed minus 3x squared all over 3y squared minus 15x squared y squared. Now, a couple things. One is I always kind of look to see if I can simplify everything. And I thought, well, too bad if, because I could have done, multiplied everything, divided everything by three if I wanted to, to simplify it, but it didn't work with the 10. So I'm going to leave it that way. And again, if you are uncomfortable with the step I kind of skipped in the middle between the green and the purple, then go ahead and put it in until you get comfortable with this. And that's my derivative. Okay. I'm only going to do one more. I'm going to stop. I'm going to start again at four with the next video. But I'm going to do one trig one, so I'm going to do number three. So I'm going to clear the ink from this page, and I'm going to do number three. Now, three looks worse. I just always like to do a trig one. So I've got the cosine of x cubed y squared and 5x squared plus 2 on this side. Now, to remind you, anything in the cosine is never going to change. But I do notice when I do the chain rule that I do have a product in there. So I am going to call my f and g's there, and I'm going to set that up for when I need it. So f is x cubed, f prime is 3x squared dx. My g is y squared. And so my g prime is going to be 2y dy. So I kind of have that set up for when I have to use that. Okay, and this is going to look really ugly at first, but if you follow uh, along with me, I'll try to uh, go through this. So first of all, we learned the chain rule, and if I look at the outside function, I see it's trig. So when I do the derivative, and remember I always call this the baby, you're going to take the derivative of the outside, don't touch the baby, times the derivative of the inside, which we already recognize as the product rule, and we did it. Okay, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine don't touch the baby. So we're going to leave it right here. Okay, so you never touch the baby. And then, um, and I hope I lift myself enough room here, I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is the product rule. So we're going to do f prime g. Again, you've got 3x squared y squared dx, okay, plus f g prime. So that's 2x cubed y dy. So that is the derivative of the left. I know it looks awful, but I'm going to try to make it look a little bit nicer as we get along. The right is not as bad of our equation because that's going to be 10x dx, and the derivative of 2 is 0. So I do have enough room. That's awesome. Now, I know on all the other ones, we went through and divided through by uh, dx right off the bat. I do not want you to do that unless you have all terms. And basically, this left is one big term. So in order for us to separate that into terms, I want you to do the distributive property. Now, when you multiply this, take everything here and throw that in the front of the trig function and make sure the dx is last. The same with that one. So this is how I'm going to write it, okay? It's going to be 
negative 3x squared y squared, then put the sign there, sine of x cubed y squared, then put the dx, okay? It just makes life a lot easier and a lot more organized, okay? Now we're going to do the next term minus, because this times a negative one is minus, throw the 2x cubed y in the front, then put the sine of x cubed y squared dy equals 10x dx. Ooh, I just barely made it. Now I have three terms. As soon as I have the terms, go ahead and divide through by the dx, and you will see that this goes away, thanks for playing, and so does this. Now, I know some of you think, why are we doing that? Just trust me. Just trust me, okay? So now let's rewrite this. And uh, this is my only dy dx, so I could actually leave this on this side and then move that over all at once, but we'll take our time. So I got negative 3x squared y squared sine of x cubed y squared minus 2x cubed y sine of x cubed y squared dy dx equals 10x, all right? So I am going to isolate this dy dx right here. I'm going to leave this on this side and move this over. So you're going to have a negative 2x cubed y sine x cubed y squared dy dx, I hope I didn't make a mistake writing that, equals 10x. Now I'm going to subtract this whole term right here. And when I subtract, actually I'm going to add it because I'm adding it to both sides. So it'll be plus 3x squared y squared, whoops, I am running out of room, sine of x cubed y squared. Okay, so that's one term, sorry. So now I'm going to solve for dy dx. This is all hooked to the dy dx by multiplication. So I'm basically going to take this whole glop right here and divide it on the side, okay? So now I have dy dx. And it's, you look so smart when you're done with this. You should leave this on your kitchen table so that your family can see how smart you are when you do this, okay? So I've got it like this. So I'm rewriting that side right there, and I'm dividing it by that whole glop. And you just found the implicit differentiation of your first trig function. Okay? So that's the end of this video. I just wanted to make sure that I did a few with you. My next video will start at number four. So I hope this helps.